When we are looking at fear problems, I think of them as two separate categories. I think there's one category of fear whereby the horse is well trained, but it has a, a, just a genuine fear reaction because horses are fearful animals. So if the horse has a genuine fear reaction, I would actually do things like, for example, recognize what it was that caused the fear reaction and then desensitize the horse to that thing. So I would make sure that the horse uh, can approach it and stop and just wait a few seconds. Um, the research suggests to wait around about 13 section, seconds and then approach a little bit more and gradually getting used to this thing <clears throat> or if it's another object bring the object closer to the horse or if it's a moving object even chase the object a little weeny bit uh, that's a good one to do with things like horses are afraid of motorbikes and quad bikes chase the object um, and then before the bike slows down stop the horse and then the quad bike will stop and then when the quad bike goes, chase it again. And this motivates the horse to get closer and closer. So horses uh, lose their fear when we do things like that. Uh, we can also positively reinforce the horse uh, for being in certain situations. So we can make the situation that he's afraid of a nice situation. And that's a good thing uh, because we can transform what he thought was a scared environment, scary environment into something that's really pleasant by giving him a click and then food, for example, in that place. The other way of looking at fear is also uh, uh, checking that the horse is not showing fear because he's generally insecure. And his fear, therefore, is more of a conflict behaviour. It's not so much a fear of these things, although it looks like it. But those things that he's afraid of are actually symptoms, not necessarily real genuine fear and the symptoms can occur because the horse is unclear on all of his basic responses and these basic responses are the responses trained by um, trained by what we call operant conditioning um, and it's really about pressure release that he learns to stop from the reins go from the legs and turn his forelegs and yield his hind legs and all of these things from the reins and legs uh, in, very important that if we train them in the ridden horse or the led horse, mm -hmm. but if we train him, train the horse, we've got to make sure he's really thorough. So when he discovers that actually go doesn't mean go anymore or stop doesn't mean stop or he gets heavy and pushes on the bit and drops the bit and does all of these sorts of things and therefore the bit loses its control of slowing or he also swerves away from one to one side or the other even though we didn't ask him to turn if he does these random acts while we're leading or riding him that can make him insecure because now the signals of equitation are only part-time they, they're not reliable and they're optional so if we get those signals back in order we may very well find and we usually do that the horse is not afraid of so many things anymore his fear was much more a symptom of his confusion. We may still have to then desensitise him to some things, but in most cases we'll find that he's actually not very scared at all. So they're the ways I, I look at fear. I think fundamentally we need to recognise that if the horse is genuinely scared of something, what, what establishes the fear response in the horse's mind is how far his legs go and how fast they go. In psychology we call this escape learning and when horses learn to escape it's embedded by the speed of the legs and how far they go. So therefore having some control of the legs and being able to stop the horse when he shows fear uh, is important but of course it's also important that when we stop the horse that we don't stop him in the most fearful place because that will be too much and that will just flood him uh, with uh, the fearful stimulus. So we've got to do everything gradually, everything systematically and like all good horsemanship, it takes patience and time to do it best. So that's one of the problems I find when I'm doing my work and even demonstrations. Uh, people might expect that I'm like a miracle worker 
Um, and sometimes it does seem miraculous and the results are fast. But the best solutions are always going to be giving people good tools for training so that they can uh, begin the journey of rehabilitating the fearful horse.